Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics of Samurai Sharpen, explain all the different parameters within Samurai, and especially focus on the different masking techniques that Samurai incorporates. For example, the ability to mask out shadow and highlight areas, which is what we have here. This is a very useful feature in the sense that quite often you have lots of noise in shadow areas and you don't want the noise sharpened. So this is very useful. And we'll talk about using edge mask strength to enhance detail in just certain areas while leaving the rest of the image alone. For example, with portraits, we often want to sharpen the eyes, but not the skin. And edge mask is one way of doing that. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. And like I said, go over the rest of the parameters within Samurai and give you a good understanding of the basics of how the plugin works within After Effects. If you're using it within Premiere Pro or Final Cut, there are other tutorials that focus on those applications. So you might want to look for that on the digitalanarchy.com tutorial page. But this is for After Effects, so let's dive into it. And we'll turn off our mask and actually zoom in a bit so we can really see what's going on with the sharpening. And we'll turn off the masking for the moment so we can see what the basic look looks like. So by default, with edge mask turned off and all the other masking turned off, Samurai operates a lot like Unsharp Mask. The amount is the intensity of the sharpen. And if we crank this up to 150, we'll see that it gets sharper. If we crank it up to 300, you can see that it just gets nice and crispy. Not exactly what we want, but if you want more cowbell, amount is the parameter you want to use. So that's pretty straightforward. Radius is a little bit trickier, and we're gonna crank up amount really high, just so that the radius becomes more obvious. Now, with sharpening, really what's happening is a contrast adjustment. You're taking an edge, and on either side of it, adding a halo that either makes it brighter or darker. And if we increase the size of the radius, we can see this a little bit more clearly. You can see the dark side of the edge, the light side of the edge, and this contrast adjustment is what makes the image appear sharper. Now, obviously this is crazy over sharpened, but what Radius does is define the size of these halos. You can have it fairly thin, as we do here, where you've got basically just a thin line of darkness along the string here, and then the string itself has been brightened. And the same goes for here. You can see the light side and the dark side. And this is what we would call a normal range. Usually with most images, you're gonna have radius set between 0.5 and 2. It really depends on how much detail is in the image. If you have a very high frequency image, say like a grove of trees with lots of small details, you might have this set to 0.5 or 0.75. If you have something like our other example, a portrait, you're gonna have radius set between one and two. And so it really depends on the frequency of detail in the image. So that's the normal settings, again, between 0.5 and 2 or so. Once you get beyond that, you start getting into creating looks. Using the sharpening, not necessarily as sharpening, but to create some sort of effect. And with the over sharpening here, we're creating sort of a grungy, distressed look to our footage. You can see if I turn Samurai off, we get the regular normal footage. And then with Samurai on, we get this kind of increased contrast, almost faux HDR type of thing going on. So if you're looking for more creative type of sharpening effects, setting radius to a high amount is will get you there. Otherwise, you really want to keep it down between 0.5 and 2 or so. And this gets us back to more of a normal look. Again, it's pretty over sharpened because we have the amount cranked up, but that's just for showing you how the filter works. So let's dive into edge mass strength. 
And we're going to jump over to our other example to talk about that. And the best way to see what Edge Mass Strength does is to turn the Show Sharpening checkbox on. And what Show Sharpening does is show you all the edges that are being sharpened. This is what Samurai is seeing, and this is what it's going to apply the effect to. And you can see that as we change the value of the Edge Mass Strength, let's set it down to zero, we're getting a lot more edges that are being picked up. And in this case, these edges correspond to the texture on the skin. And this is definitely something we do not want sharpened. In fact, we have our whole Beauty Box product just to avoid this type of situation where the skin gets very sandpapery and doesn't look very good. But this is also known as a low frequency area. The tonal differences between one side of the edge and the other are not that great. Certainly not the same as we have with, you know, say the eyeball here, which is a very significant edge. Compared to the eyeball, the lines in the skin are very low contrast and not particularly significant. But with edge mass strength set to zero, Samurai is sharpening those just as much as it is the eye. And that's not what we want. So the great thing about edge mass strength is it really protects the low frequency areas, which are areas like this, sort of large color areas with a little bit of variation. And so you can see as we increase the edge mass strength, more and more of that is getting protected and will not be sharpened until we get back to where we were, which was around 15. And you can see this is basically solid black. So there's no, almost no sharpening happening in the skin and all the sharpening is happening around the eye, which is where we want it. And we can turn this off. And now if we turn Samurai on and off, you can see that we're just sharpening the eye. And I don't know how visible this is going to be on YouTube, but hopefully you're following along at home and can do this same experiment on footage of your own and see exactly how it works. Now I'll point out that the masks in Samurai operate just like math everywhere else, be it a track mat or a key or whatever. Where black is, no sharpening is happening. Where white is, that's getting the maximum amount of sharpening. And the shades of gray are getting a reduced amount of sharpening, but they are being sharpened to some degree. And we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get to these shadow and highlight masks, which are coming up right now. So we'll turn off show sharpening. And hopefully that gives you an idea of what edge mass strength does. And we'll jump back to our guitar footage. Now one of the first things you're going to notice about this, aside from the fact that it's over sharpened, is that we have a lot of noise down here that is being sharpened as well. And that's something we really don't want. That's going to make your footage look worse. And so one of the super cool things about Samurai is the ability to mask off these areas, be it very dark areas as we have here within the guitar or lighter areas as we have with the inlay up here and we'll get to that in a second but let's talk about how to deal with shadows as this will probably be the most common use for the masking so we can turn the show mask on and once I turn on use shadow mask let's open this up a little bit it's going to start masking off these areas so by default the parameters under Shadow Mask, the black level and the black midpoint, are set to 0 and 25. And obviously this is not necessarily what we want. It's not going to help us out very much. And the black level and the black midpoint and the white level and the white midpoint operate a lot like curves. And in fact, if this was a curves dialog, it would look something like this, where this is your black level, this is the black midpoint, this is the white midpoint, and this is the white level. And so by adjusting these, you're isolating the midtones, and you get to define what you consider midtones, and only applying sharpening just to that area. And of course, you have a bit of a fall off, usually, unless these are set to exactly the same number or very close to it. But this is what we're trying to do with the highlight and shadow masks controls. So we'll turn that off. And as you can see, as we increase the black level, more areas become black. 
Obviously this is very high contrast, not what we want, so we want to move the midpoint out to maybe around 50. Dial this down just a little bit. And you can see now this area is totally protected from being sharpened. And if we turn off show mask, you can see the difference between with the mask on and with the mask off. On, off. It just does a really nice job of protecting these darker areas where there's really no detail anyways and preventing the noise from being sharpened. And again, if we turn on show mask, you'll see that in the dark areas, just like any other mask, it means there's no sharpening happening. The white areas are getting 100% of the amount in radius. And then the shades of gray are getting something in between zero and 100, depending on how close they are to white. So the closer they are to white, the more sharpening they're getting closer they are to black, the less sharpening they're getting. Exactly the same way that other types of masks work. So let's talk about the highlight mask. We're going to turn that on. And you can see that we turn off show mask. And so what we're doing here is if we turn off samurai, you'll see that there's a lot of detail in here. There are some white areas. But because this is a thin area, what happens is that when you sharpen it, the halos take over and start blowing out the detail. And so you'll see that if I turn off the highlight mask and turn Samurai on, we lose a lot of the detail that's part of that inlay. Lots of light colors in here that are just getting blown out. And so by turning on the highlight mask and protecting those areas, Again, this works exactly the same way as the shadow mask did, except in the inverse. So instead of adjusting these points, which is what you're doing with the shadow mask, you're adjusting these points. Of course, this assumes that you're familiar with the curves filter, but if you are, you'll understand what's happening here. So let's turn that off. Let's zoom back in. Okay, so we have the highlight mask turned on. This is isolating just those colors. We're picking up a little bit of the lighter shades in the body of the guitar. Again, you can kind of play around with the white midpoint to adjust that. But to get the areas we want in the inlay, it's going to affect the guitar just a little bit. But that's okay. It's, it's not going to be significant. So now if we go back and look at the original image, you can see that we've done a much better job of protecting the details in the inlay. And if we turn the highlight mask off, you can see it get blown out. And that's with it on, off, on, etc. Now, this is a very subtle difference, but sharpening is really all about the subtleties. You really don't want to do what we've done here and have the amount cranked up to 225, especially with video, because video is going to have. You know, you, you can easily introduce motion artifacts and other problems and end up with a very crunchy looking video that does not look very good when it's shown on a TV. Good sharpening is very subtle sharpening. And the tools in Samurai, all the different types of masking allows you to do, to have a lot of control over what your sharpening looks like, what look you're going for, and get something that's just perfect for the footage that you're working on. And every footage is gonna be a little bit different. It's a little bit hard to show very subtle effects on YouTube, but hopefully this gives you some idea of what it does, and so you can go and experiment with it. And that's pretty much all there is to the basics of Samurai Sharpen. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. We have a lot more tutorials, we have free plugins, demo plugins, example movies, all sorts of good stuff on digitalanarchy.com. So definitely head on over there and check that out. Sign up for our newsletter to get announcements of updates and specials. And again, that is digitalanarchy.com. And thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.